breaking in, for God's sakes! No, it's just, just me. Rob, you need to tell me what in the hell's going on. We're being poisoned. Rob. What? I'm t I mean it. DuPont is knowingly poisoning us. You mean the farmer. His land. All of us. Please don't look at me like that. They're already poisoning the baby. No. No, I'm not listening to this. Sarah! Stop it! Just stop it, okay? Do you hear yourself? You are acting like a crazy person, tearing up our floor, scaring me half to death. I know it's my job to support you, but that does not mean you get to come into our home, to our family, and tell me that our unborn child is being poisoned. No! I'm sorry. Can I please explain? Explain what? All of it. And if, if you still think I'm crazy, I'll drop it. I swear to God. I swear to you. There is a man-made chemical that was invented during the Manhattan Project. It repelled the elements, especially water. So they used it to make the first ever waterproof coating for tanks. It was indestructible. Then some companies thought, hey, why just a battlefield? Why not bring this chemical into American homes? Rob's here. He'll see you now. DuPont was one of those companies. So they took this chemical, PFOA, they renamed it C8, and they made their own impenetrable coating, but not for tanks, for pans. They called it Teflon, a shining symbol of American ingenuity made right here in the USA in Parkersburg, West Virginia. But right from the start, something wasn't right. The men and workers who made Teflon were coming down with nausea fevers. DuPont wanted to know why. So they laced cigarettes with Teflon. They told a group of the workers, hey, smoke these. DuPonters did as they were told. Almost all those men were hospitalized. That's 1962. One year after Teflon launched and already DuPont knew. The dust, they just sent right up the smokestacks, released into the air. The sludge tossed it into the Ohio or uh, packed it in the drums and, and, and chucked it into the Chesapeake. But then the drums started washing up. So DuPont starts digging ditches on the grounds of the Washington Works plant. And in those pits, they dumped thousands of tons of toxic C8 sludge and dust. One of the men that they hired to dig those ditches was Wilbur Tennant's brother, Jim. But they weren't the only ones covering their tracks. 3M, who, who pioneered these chemicals for Scotchgard, they were testing them on monkeys. Most of the monkeys died. It wasn't like DuPont didn't know that because they were doing their own tests on rats. Watch their organs balloon. Now the rats are getting cancers. Tested them on pregnant rats and watched them give birth to pups with deformed eyes. So they yanked all the young women off the Teflon line and never told them why. Sue Bailey's job was scrubbing these huge steel vats where they held the liquid C8. She was pregnant. I love you. Would <laughs> you stop? <laughs> she gave birth to a baby with one nostril and a deformed eye. You remember how DuPont had seen those deformities in her rats? What about his eyes? Blue, just like all new But the normal, the lids, the, the pupils. Mr. Balot, relax. <laughs> He's perfect. <laughs> hey, hi, Charlie. So Sue goes to DuPont. She says, why did you pull me off the Teflon line? Did C8 make my baby this way? No, they tell her. Then all of her records from her time at Teflon disappear. One year later, they put 
all of the women back on Teflon and never say a thing. He's here. DuPont knew everything. They knew that the C8 they put into the air and buried into the ground for decades was causing cancers. They knew that their own workers were getting these cancers. They knew that the consumers too were being exposed and not just in Teflon, in, in paints, in fabrics, in uh, raincoats, boots. To this day, for 40 years, you knew C8 was poison. You knew the Happy Pan was a ticking time bomb. And you knew exactly why. Because C8, it stays in us forever. Our bodies are incapable of breaking it down. And knowing all of this, still you did nothing. Because doing something, quote, would essentially put the long-term viability of this product segment on the line, end quote. You're making too much money. One billion dollars a year just in profit, just in Teflon. And so you pumped millions more pounds of toxic C8 into the air, into the water, so much so you could actually see it foam. C8 was everywhere. There was nowhere left for you to contaminate. And that's when they came to Jim. They knew he was sick and needed the money and they needed his land. And when they got it, they dug up all the C8 from every single pit at the Washington Works, 14 million pounds of toxic C8 sludge, and they dumped it again, this time right up there, steps from your creek, from your house. And that's what your cows have been drinking, Earl. Put them behind bars. Whole damn lot of them, rot in jail. I understand, believe me, but th this is a civil case. The most we can hope for is damages. Don't want no money. Whole damn world. They... <coughs> Need to see what they done. You're right, they should. And, and it kills me that they won't. That would mean going to trial and proving that C8 killed your cows. And every scientist who knows anything about any of this already works for these chemical companies. That's not an accident, Earl. Earl, these, these companies, they have all the money all the time and they'll use it, trust me. I know, I was one of them. You're still one of them. You, you can't be serious. You, you know what I put on the line here. You want a prize? Some medal, because for once in your life you took the side of the little guy? <sighs> Sorry, no prize. All you get is your share of this blood money. And you sleep real good tonight. Talk to your family. It ain't just my cows, it was poison. What do you think I fed my family on? Wilbur, please, leave this place. Start over. Give your family a fighting chance. Too late for that. We got it, Sandra and me, the cancer. Surprise, surprise.